Amazon now has a million robots working in their warehouses. They almost have more robots than humans. I'll bet we're thinking the same thing about all these robots taking all these jobs, right? How can we get rich off the misfortune of others? Today, we're going to talk about the company that's selling Amazon these robots. It's one we used to be invested in and one that ARK seems to love. Today, we're going to talk about Teradyne, trades under the ticker TER. So we first came across Teradyne back in 2017. We wrote this piece on Universal Robots, and that was several years after Teradyne had acquired Universal Robots, which was said to be the global leader in the Cobots segment. You can see what Cobots look like right here. They had shipped more than 4,000 Cobots to date. So in 2018, we initiated a position in Teradyne that was based on additional acquisitions they made. MIR was doing robotics hardware out of Odense, Denmark, and Energrid was doing robotics software. We also liked the $1.5 billion in cash Teradyne had to do more robotics acquisitions. And at that time, industrial robotics accounted for 10% of revenues. They classified it under a segment called industrial automation. Now, this is what we call a skate to where the puck will be investment play. It worked out really well with NVIDIA, not so well with Teradyne yet. As I said, the key metric to watch here would be the industrial automation segment. They've since changed that to robotics. Now, although this division only accounted for 10% of revenues back then, they expected it to skyrocket. They said on an earnings call, universal robots, so just that single acquisition, would see sales growth of 45 to 50% a year over the next four years. Well, Two years later, we published this piece, Why We're Trimming Our Gains in Teradyne Stock. And this was prior to when we had established very strict rules about when to sell. So we sell a tech stock for, well, really one of three reasons. First of all, it exceeds a particular weighting threshold in our total tech portfolio, but we exit a stock if growth stalls or our thesis changes. So in this case, we had trimmed Teradyne to cover our entire cost basis. We were up around 260% on the position. Of course, you know, as we say, that these random gains don't really mean anything without a benchmark, but it had ran quite well. You can read about it in that piece. And some things to note at that time, it was the slowest growing division at 41% growth. What had happened remarkably was that it was actually becoming less of a pure play in industrial robotics as time went on. So the idea being there that the other divisions were doing so well. And I really like this sentence. We said, we always need to be honest about whether or not our gains were part of a well thought out strategy or simply the consequences of unforeseen events. In this case, the other divisions were what drove that stock price. So Two years went by again, and we published this piece, again, still holding the stock. Teradyne stock, the forecast looks better than ever. And in that piece, we talked about how, of course, the entire reason we invested in Teradyne was because of their move into industrial automation. And it has been, over the years, commonly mentioned as a driver of future growth. And they were expecting by 2024 for that sales mix of industrial automation to be 18% of total sales. You can see that rendered here. And in that earnings call that we had watched, the CEO was talking about warehouse automation. Now, an analyst from Goldman Sachs had actually asked a really good question. He said, why wouldn't this division grow 60, 70, 80 percent as opposed to 35 to 40 percent? And the CEO said, well, that's the million dollar question that I ask every day. Everything is there. So there's nothing preventing them, he says, except to deploy a cobot takes a human, a skilled human, a technician, and presumably it's a manpower issue. Also in that piece, we noted a firm called Nimble Robotics. And the CEO of Teradyne said, one of our partners, Nimble Robotics, uses AI unique grippers and clever software on our UR Cobot for high volume warehouse operations for numerous national brands. Interesting. And when we took a closer look at Nimble, we noted that some of the people associated with it were very notable in the AI community and that they had a Cobot working for some of the world's largest retailers at scale and using Teradyne's Cobots to power their platform. And when you go to Nimble's site today, it's quite interesting. You see this chart here showing select fulfillment centers can reach 99% of the U.S. population in one to two days. And Amazon delivery is getting good. It's getting really good. So the other day I was thinking about ordering a pair of shoes and I noticed a UPS truck at the head of my driveway. As soon as I clicked buy, he walked down and handed me my shoes. Now, jokes aside, have you noticed how incredibly fast Amazon is getting? That's a side 
side effect of automated fulfillment. So allow me to introduce Vulcan. This is Amazon's first robot with a sense of touch that they debuted recently. And look at this picture. There's a UR logo on that cobot and a firm that did a really good job of figuring out that these are Teradyne products actually zoomed in here on this picture of Vulcan and noted the Universal Robots label there. So indeed, it's Universal Robots. I shared this piece with premium subscribers on Discord. It's titled Teradyne Tapped for Amazon's Breakthrough Robot. It's quite good. But I've got a question for you. What percentage of Teradyne's revenues do you think came from industrial robots last year? Now, remember, it was 10% when we first invested, right? Then we were promised 18% last year. What do you think the actual number was? Well, it turned out to be about 13%. So it didn't do nearly as well as they thought. And here you can see where they're trying to sort of explain that away. And you notice how they've listed other industrial robotics companies here, some that we cover in our tech stock catalog. And on average, they've seen sales decline as a symptom of, wait for it, the old macroeconomic headwinds blowing. So what they're trying to show you here is, in fact, their robots are selling more than their peers, even though the market isn't doing so well. So now they have a new target. It's not even 18%. Now they say, well, by 2028, robotics are going to be 16% of sales. You may say, well, what about Amazon? Well, first of all, Amazon's not disclosed as a top 20 customer you see on this chart here. Now, there could be reasons for that. But when you look at how they expect robotics growth to drive overall growth, for the company and they look at addressing new markets, the logistics component here is a small percentage of total revenue. So what they do talk about here is how AI-enabled revenue was $11 million last year. They expect that to grow to $150 million by 2028. So this doesn't reflect Amazon playing a huge role. And Hunter Brook in their piece talked about a report from UBS and there were a couple interesting tidbits to note here. So they said that this revelation of Vulcan is really the first tangible outcome of Teradyne's strategy to engage more directly with large OEMs. They announced that strategy in late 2023. They said, potentially marking a turning point for Teradyne's industrial automation business. I certainly hope so. We've been waiting long enough. They say the company was clear that contributions are still very limited this year and that the demand for those solutions remains under pressure. So don't expect anything dramatic anytime soon. And Hunterbrook asked a great question. They said, could Amazon be building their own robot, Cobot? Why wouldn't they, right? They can build up this proof of concept using someone else's Cobot and all this technology, acquire Nimble, and then slap it on their own robotics set, though Nimble seems to be working across a lot more customers than just Amazon. But when you look at Teradyne here, you see this is recently Teradyne Robotics. NVIDIA show latest AI accelerator toolkit. So Teradyne is cozied up with NVIDIA. That's supposed to do great things. But when are we going to see industrial robotics revenue start growing? Look at what we've done here is taken industrial automation and robotics, those segments over time and plotted them on this chart. This is not a good trend. We need to see this trend reverse. And when you look at all the industrial robotics stocks we've covered, and if you're a Nanalyze premium annual subscriber, you can go to our tech stock catalog, it contains 460 tech stocks. You can filter on industrial robotics and look at a number of names here. And we have of course, notes and articles covering all these. But when I go back to look at our comments on Teradyne, it says industrial robotics wasn't seeing enough traction. So we exited chip testing equipment thesis isn't interesting to us either as it's only a small portion of the semiconductor industry. So Teradyne isn't a firm that we would invest in because they've been talking about this industrial robotics segment for as long as I can remember, and they still haven't been able to have that show growth to where it becomes more than just 10 or 13% of their total business. When you look at the company's current valuation, the share price over the past year is a bit depressed, down 40%. That gives it a simple valuation ratio of around six. So somewhere just below our catalog average. So you wouldn't say it was overvalued. What to do? Well, robotics for that firm has been stale for so long that a breakout should be obvious watching that metric that I showed you. And we're going to be watching it quite closely. Industrial automation revenues are key. Based on management's inability to grow industrial robotics in the past, we have less faith in stories of the future. People may be missing out on Teradyne as a robotic stock, but are they missing out on much? Are you willing to skate to where the puck will be for Teradyne? Let us know in the comments section. I'm going to go ahead and leave you with another piece we did recently on robotic stocks. Drones are robots too. We look at six drone stocks that ARK Invest has invested in. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this today.